the tempter, the devil, he's a tempter. And he comes to tempt. Now, Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin. And we see the areas in the scripture, at least three places where Jesus, Jesus was tempted of the devil. And the devil was tempting Jesus in an area where the human body was weak because he had not eaten in 40 days. That's where the devil tempts. He does not tempt us where we're strong. Why would he waste his time? He focuses in on the area that's weak. And he'll keep hitting that same spot until he breaks through. That's why the scripture says we're supposed to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from us. Doesn't say he'll walk away. It says he'll flee. How can you get the devil to run? How can you get the devil to flee? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he'll flee. I don't know altogether what that does for you, but when I understand that the devil is going to run from me now I understand he's not running from me right he's, he's running from the from the God of heaven he's running from the Lord because he's not going to run from you and I but our part is to submit to God which you don't hear when you hear that scripture being quoted you don't ever usually hear about the submission part it's always resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But what you don't understand maybe is that the most important part is the submission part. You're not going to be protected by God unless you're submitted to God. You're no match for the devil. And Jesus overcame the devil... With the word of God. Amen. Every time. The tempter came. To Jesus. With a different temptation. He overcame with the word. It is written. He was driven. By the Holy Spirit. Into. This place. On purpose. He was not out of the will of God when he was being tempted of the devil. You say, when will the temptations ever end? Well, according to the scripture, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he is tried, he shall wear the crown of life, receive a crown of life. So that tells me that not only do the temptations never end while you're on the earth, but they become more difficult. And what a temptation is for me may not be a temptation for you. The devil knows our weaknesses. And let me say this again. The devil will never waste his time in an area where he has no chance of getting through. He goes for your weakness. That's why the scripture says, give no place to the devil. The word place means entrance. Jesus said, the devil is coming, but he has no place in me. The God of this world is coming, and he has no place in me. 
He has no entrance. You have to leave the door open if the devil's going to come in. Remember what the Lord said through Peter? Why has Satan, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? That Satan has filled your heart. Why did you let Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And we see that Judas opened the door and was filled with Satan. And we're watching a generation before us that's opening the door, opening what they call the portal to accept the spirit of Satan. Were they going to worship the beast? Giving themselves over to a beast-like nature. And you could see the picture of it in the book of Romans, chapter 1. Strange flesh, men with men, working that which is unseemly. Filthiness. Idolatry, hatred, murder. Now, this world's in trouble. But as believers in Christ, we can have all the doors closed. Now, I've been watching the different movies that have been coming out with scriptures and different things and I noticed that when they show the Ark on the History Channel, on this new TV series or whatever, this History Channel series, they show the Ark, Noah's Ark, and they show it leaking. They show all kinds of water coming into the Ark. See, I don't believe that. I don't believe one drop came in that Ark. It's a type. Of being washed in the blood. See. The ark had to be. Covered with. Pitch. Completely overlaid with pitch. And that's a type. Of the blood of Jesus. Because the pitch. Or the sap of a tree. The pitch of a tree. Is its blood. You, you stick something into a tree and it begins to ooze out, especially pine trees. The sap begins to pour out. And the ark was to be overlaid with pitch. And Moses was led by God. And I don't think that this ark sprang any leaks. And I don't think that when you're washed in the blood of Jesus, sanctified by the Holy Ghost, that you're going to spring any leaks. Amen. Amen. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you're leaking, there's a door open. There's an area of your life that needs to be tended to. Otherwise, why is that vessel leaking? Why is it that you can't seem to stay filled with the Holy Ghost? I remember one time in a service where we were worshiping the Lord and we were listening to the preaching of God's word and it was like a lightning bolt hit the top of my head and I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, I was so full of the Spirit. I didn't even feel human. 
Felt like another man. Felt just supernatural almost. Indestructible even. I mean, just felt solid as a rock. And I went into another room after leaving this sanctuary and something was said and I didn't like what was said and I said something back. And as soon as I did, because I was being insubordinate, I was empty that fast. And the words that came out of my mouth, it wasn't so much the words, it was the words, the way they came out of my mouth. The words were bitter. And they were defiling. And the Holy Ghost was not in that. And immediately, I was empty that fast. I mean, I went from being just so full of the Spirit. I should have stayed in the sanctuary. Boy, the devil knows how to do it, doesn't he? He knows how to get us empty. You know, the devil cannot defeat us. Even if you're a babe in Christ and just been filled with the Holy Ghost. You may have a thimble full of the Holy Ghost. You might just be a little filled. Or you may be fully filled, but you're just a babe in Christ. Or you're just small, you know, you're not very mature. Your spirit hasn't grown very much. But at least you're full. The devil doesn't have a chance when we're full of the Spirit. Because the Spirit of the Lord has control you walk in the spirit you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh so he seeks to empty us he seeks to get us empty and if we don't stay full of the spirit that's where the devil has an advantage be not drunken with wine but be filled with the spirit amen So it's our responsibility to stay filled with the Spirit. And if we're constantly not able to stay filled with the Spirit, there's a reason. And if you're not filled with the Spirit, you're not going to have the mind of Christ. You're not going to have the character of Christ. You're not going to have the fruit of the Spirit manifested in your life. You've got to be filled with the Spirit to have this, the fruit of the Spirit being manifested. Amen. So, what are those areas in our lives that need to be tended to? If you don't know, God will show you if you ask Him. But remember, let no man think when he is tempted, he is tempted of God. Because God cannot be tempted and He tempteth no man. But every man is tempted when he is led away of his own lust. And that word led means to be dragged. It's just like a wild beast that comes and drags you away to devour you. And the scripture says the devil is seeking whom he may devour. But before he devours you, He drags you. Lions don't eat their prey right away. They disable it first. And then they drag it away. And then they devour. You listening? Sin, when it has conceived, or lust when it has conceived, bringeth forth sin. When sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. See, sin isn't done yet. You're still alive. That lion's not done with you yet. He's still dragging you. He hasn't got you to his destination yet where he will devour you. There's a lot of folks in this hour that are being dragged away by the lusts of their flesh and they don't even know it. There's folks that think they're being drawn by the Holy Spirit. It's really the devil. They're being dragged by the beast. Amen? The beast kingdom. 
Who's dragging you? Because according to the scripture, when Jesus talks about being drawn by the Holy Spirit, it's the same word. It means to be dragged. Why is it that the Lord has to drag us for a little while before He devours us by the power of the Holy Ghost? Before we're devoured by God in His love and His mercy for us? How is it that God drags us? Why does God drag us? It's because we still have flesh and the flesh does not want to go the way of holiness. So God in His mercy, He drags us like you, like an adult will drag their child when the child wants something in the store and you, the mother or the dad is pulling the child along. Or when the daddy is taking the child to the woodshed and the child doesn't want to go. They have to drag them. Are you listening? Depending on how strong you are, the child might get away. That child needs that whooping. That child needs that spanking. Amen? But this generation seems to be slipping away. Slipping out of our grip. Amen? Don't spare the rod. What does the scripture say? You'll spoil the child. Not only are the children getting out of our grip, but in many cases, they don't even end up getting in our grip. Parents are doing this new thing called time out. You show me in the scripture where time out will drive rebellion far from a child. They're trying all kinds of new things. I've watched where TV programs like Oprah and different programs like that, where they're taking little children and sending them off for a few days over to the military base, where soldiers are putting fear in these children. And so much, they say that when these children come home, they just can't wait to wrap their arms around their mothers. And listen, they might act like the answer is a military soldier yelling at your children, but it's just a matter of a few more days and those children are right back to their rebellion again. Because there's a fallen nature within that child that he's yielding to and the devil is dragging them away to devour them. This generation is being dragged away and devoured. Are you listening? He's like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. The lion of the king of Judah, the, the lion, Jesus. The devil's not a lion. He's like a lion. He's seeking whom he made of our. Why the roar? Why does the devil roar? They tell us that lions, when they roar, that's to paralyze their prey with fear. Amen. See, that's how he operates. And he doesn't go after the strong ones. He goes after the weak ones. He goes after the little ones. He roars, paralyzes, disables, and then de drags away, and then devours. That's how a lion operates. And lions don't just go stand out in the middle of the field waiting for their prey to come along. They crouch down. Are you listening? I'm telling you something if you'll listen. The devil, like a lion, this is how he operates. He crouches down. He waits. He waits for his opportune time. He calculates. And then he roars. Paralyzes. Then he goes out to disable by cutting the ligaments. He goes and gets as many as he can by paralyzing them. Disabling them. 
And then, at the most opportune possible time where there's nothing that can threaten him from finishing off his prey, he starts to drag them off into the woods, away from the open field. And this is the place where he will begin to devour, even alive. Now we know there's a beast kingdom rising in this hour. A lot of folks are being dragged. But there are still those that have yet to be paralyzed by fear. There are people in all different stages. Where are you in these stages? Fear hath torment. Because of the fear of death, they were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This is how the Antichrist is going to operate his kingdom. The fear of death. The roar. Are you listening? And... The guillotine or the sword... Beheading people, according to the book of Revelation, will be his pressure. It's not his only pressure. Also, what he's going to use, because it says he causeth people to receive the mark. In other words, these are people that don't really want to take the mark, but they're being pressured. The sword... Cutting off the head, Islam is going to cut off some heads during the tribulation hour. But then there's also the aspect of you won't be able to buy or sell without this mark of servitude. Islam is taking over the world, it's not altogether religion. Listen. Islam's not a religion. It's a government. Hello. If it's the money that you follow and you say it's all the wars are because of oil, because of greed, because of money, you don't have to look very far to see who has all the money. Just look at Saudi Arabia. The idiots that are building the most expensive buildings, building the tallest building that now holds the world's record, not on sinking sand, but building on top of the water on top of sinking sand. That's how much money they have that they can build so foolishly in arrogance and pride. And the presidents of the United States have always been tied to those that have the money. That's what Obama is doing, bowing down to the king of Egypt. They're playing the most dangerous game right now, folks. Do you understand? Cheney used to have women run naked take out his rifle and shoot them as a sport. Program slaves. Strip them down naked. And you're not talking about just older women. You're talking about little children. Use them as sport. That's how evil that man is. That's how wicked Cheney is. So di Just so diabolical. They call, he calls it the most dangerous game. There's sex and violence that you cannot even imagine. These are beast-like people. These are people that have the minds of beasts. They have no value for human life. You say, well, are they Satanists? 
They are part of a secret order that is Luciferian. They think that the light that's in them is the true light when it's really darkness. Jesus said, if that light that is in you is really darkness, he said, how great is that darkness? Multitudes in this hour that are being paralyzed, disabled, and dragged away to be devoured by the devil. Where are you, friend, in the stages of this process? Do you find yourself? See that lion seeks whom he may devour. He can't devour everyone. So he doesn't go after everyone. I want you to understand something. The devil does not go after those that are strong in the Lord. He doesn't go after those that are filled with the Holy Ghost. He doesn't go after those that he has no chance of taking down. He waits till they get far ahead. And then he goes after the young. He goes after the weak. He goes after those that are not strong in faith. Those that are not powerful in God. Those are the ones he's got his eyes on. The Bible says he stands before the woman ready to devour the child as soon as it's born. Are you listening? He doesn't go after the church as the strong filled with the Holy Ghost. He goes after the young. He goes after the babes. He goes after the ones that are weak in faith. We need to be watching. We need to be on the watch. The devil, like a lion, is seeking whom he may devour, whom stand steadfast, the scripture says. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he's not playing games, folks. He's taking down multitudes. He doesn't care about the older ones in the church. He already has them. He's after the young. He's after the young. He's after the innocent. He's devouring the innocent every day through abortion. Not only physically, but spiritually. There are those that are being aborted before they even come to the birth. How many spiritual abortions are there today right at the altar that never get through to being born again? They never get all the way through. And they get up and they're told they're saved and then they go off and they have nobody to be there for them. I'm watching it every day, friends. I'm watching it every day where those that are being told they're all right, that are going off by themselves and they have no support from the ministry, no support from the church. They're all alone. They're out there and the devil's seeking to devour them and they reach out for help and there's nobody there to help them. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven that sees them and I'm telling you, we need need to be praying. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. The devil is coming. Paul said, I did not cease to warn you day and night. There were wolves coming in that were not going to spare the flock. Paul didn't talk about the lion in that instance. He was talking about those that were the wolf. Isn't it interesting that the scripture says they have sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're wolves. What does that mean? It means they don't really truly care about the flock. Are you listening? They don't genuinely care. They don't really truly care. They're not there in the church or in the ministry because they love people, because they love souls, because they care, because they have value for life. They're dangerous. They're there and they are licking their chops and they are there to devour. They are there to take down. They are there to destroy 
wolves. Wolves. A beast kingdom is rising. The wolves, the lions, the bears. Russia's not dead. He's only wounded. Communism's not gone, folks. It's only been wounded. Then you've got the serpent or the dragon. The beasts of the kingdom. Wolves, serpents, dragons, bears. Are you listening? These are the beasts that we read about in the scripture. The devil is coming to try to devour you. He knows your weakness. He knows how to get in. It's up to us to close every door. You say, well, Brother Joseph, how do you close the doors? Confession is made unto salvation. It's unconfessed sin that opens the door to the devil. Do you have something in your life, in your heart, somewhere that is unconfessed? Is there something secret? Is there something so deep? A wound? Is there a wound? Is there an area where you've been wounded by sin? Wounded by the master of deceit? Because if you're wounded, you're leaving a blood trail for the beast kingdom. Are you listening? You can't afford to be wounded. You can't be afford to have any tears. You can't afford that. You must be made whole. You must let Jesus put you back together. You must be made whole so the devil has no track on you. He can't find you. There's a secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. Thou wilt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. There is a hiding place, friend, where the devil can't find you. There's a place where the dragon, where the serpent, where the bear, where the lion, where these animals can't find you. Where the devil can't find you. There's a hiding place you got to find the place in God where there's safety. But you got to confess all your sins. My little children, sin not, but if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. you got to come to the place where you seek God with all your heart. Ask God to seek you. Ask the Holy Ghost to find those areas of your life where there's a wound. You've been wounded. The master of deceit has wounded you. There's an open door. There's an open gaping wound. And your blood is pouring out. And you're losing life. You're losing strength. And you're getting to the place where you can't even move anymore. I'm telling you, friend, the devil's already got you in that place. He's only going after another one to take another one down. But he's coming back for you. He's coming back for you. And eventually he'll begin to drag you off over into the woods. And he's going to devour you. And only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can heal you. Only Jesus can put you back together. Only Jesus can heal you. Heal that gaping wound. Only the Lord can pick you up and carry you out of the wilderness into the place where you're safe from the devil. Safe from that devil that comes to seek and to devour. Tell Jesus where it hurts. Tell Jesus where the wound is. Tell him, tell him, say, Jesus, I'm hurting right here, Lord. Cry unto the Lord. Call out to Jesus. He can heal. He can make whole. 
His blood will make you whole. His blood will cleanse. His blood, his blood will change. His blood will renew. His blood can close that open gaping wound that the enemy has made that is torn against you. He's torn and he's cut and he has left you paralyzed. You're disabled. And you're laying there. You're laying there. And you're tired. And you're weary. And you're wondering where Jesus is. He's waiting for you to call on Him. He's waiting for you to cry out for help. And you're laying there. But I'm telling you that devil's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back and he'll begin to drag you. And he'll start dragging you off. And he's going to start dragging you. And all of a sudden the Bible says uh, the Holy Ghost is dragging. And there's a dragging going on. And God's got one end of you and the devil's got the other end of you. And if you're not careful, friend, you're going to be torn right down the middle. And God's going to get half. And, and the devil's going to get half. And you're going to be d just divided. And the Bible says that if you're divided against yourself, you won't stand. Torn between two, torn between two kingdoms, torn between two masters. The Lord is calling. The Lord is dealing. The Lord is drawing. He is dragging from one end and the devil is dragging from the other end. And you say, well, Jesus is stronger than the devil. Yeah, but you got to let Jesus help you. Because as long as there's anything in you that the devil can get a hold of, he can keep dragging. He can keep pulling. He's got his teeth in you. He's got his claws in you. And he's pulling you. He's pulling you. There's one stronger on the other end. And he's pulling on you. And he's willing that none should perish. That none should be lost. And he's not going to give up and he's not going to quit. But there's coming a place where the flesh is going to quit. Where the flesh is weak and there's going to be a split. There's going to be that which they'll be divided. And you'll be left as a double man, a double minded person. The devil has half of you and God's got the other half. Are you listening, friend? The Bible says the last state of that man is worse than at the beginning. An unstable man in all his ways is, or a, a double-minded man in all his ways is unstable in all his ways. James talks about the unstable person. Lovers of the world. Adulterers and adulteresses. Can you see it, friend? Can you see the lion? He's dragging you off. Can you see? Can you see the, 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 the dragon draw, dragging you off? Can you see the bear dragging you off? These are all beasts of the beast kingdom. They're dragging. They're pulling. There's a pull. And you keep on saying in your mind, but Jesus is stronger. I know God's stronger. He's the stronger man. He can help me. And he can. But you got to cry out to him. You got to cry out to him. Because only Jesus can pull you completely away from the devil. Only Jesus can pull you completely away from the devil. Jesus overcame in the temptations of the devil. He overcame by the word of God. The truth makes you free. Amen? I know that I did not give this message the way that it needed to be given. Maybe somebody else can pick this message up and preach it. Share it with others. The beasts... 
the devil is coming to tempt, to drag away. But you're being dragged away of your own lust. But if you'll get that lust confessed and get it under the blood, get free of that lust, listen, then the devil has lost his hold on you. He can't drag you anymore. Amen. And then Jesus will take you and he will pour in the oil and wine and he'll heal up the wounds and he'll have you to stand again like the soldier you once was. And you'll stand in the power of his might and help others to get free from the beast kingdom. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Somebody out there, you're being dragged away. Call on Jesus. Get that lust under the blood of Jesus. Confess that sin to Jesus before you're dragged into the woods and devoured. Devoured. I'm sure it didn't happen all at once for Ananias and Sapphira. It was a temptation. But it became bigger and bigger. Became greater and greater. To where they had no control anymore. That's what happened with Judas. It started out small. Started out as a thought. But then the thought began to consume him. Are you listening folks? That's how it starts. It starts out just a little. And it grows and it grows to where it becomes a fire that's devouring you. The only way to stop those fiery darts is the shield of faith. Hold up that shield of faith. Quench those fiery darts. When those darts get in, they begin to devour you just like the lion devours. Are you listening? The devil is an energy. He's a spirit. It's a spirit. The devil, Satan, an energy. He's not human. Like a fire devours. Like an energy it devours. But it's taking you down. It's only destroying you. It has control. It has, but it doesn't have full control. You can still break free. You can still get free. The Bible says they were given over to the lust of the flesh. And then it says they were given up. God gave them up. You haven't been given up yet. You not only have a completely reprobate mind. You haven't completely turned your back on God. But the struggle's not over. And as long as that lust is in your life, the devil has something to pull on. And he'll keep pulling. And he's relentless. Are you listening? He has a tenacity. He's not giving up. And he's not just pulling on your flesh. He wants to take your soul to hell. He wants to drag your soul into the regions of the damned. I hope this helps somebody. I hope the truth has helped somebody. Give this message to somebody. Share it with somebody. It'll help somebody. The truth will make them free. Amen. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get more difficult. We need to get free of sin. Completely free of any lusts. Because lust will bring you down. That's what the devil works with. When lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. When sin is finished, it brings forth death. It starts with the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. But it ends in death. It ends in death. The second death. In hell and in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Let Jesus help you. Get free. Get free from the devil. Get free from the tempter. 
while you still can.